Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today I'm going to talk about a situation that occurs in The Dark Knight Rises, but in case you haven't seen it, don't worry, there are no spoilers in this video. Instead, I'm going to talk about a situation that comes up in the film that also comes up in a lot of other films and TV shows, and I'm going to talk about the underlying game theoretical mechanics of the situations. And that type of situation I'm calling a hostage's dilemma. So in a hostage's dilemma, there are 50 people locked in a room, and they all have the password. The bad guy needs to get the password out of one of these individuals. Once he has the password, he's happy. So one by one, the bad guy is going to ask for the password from a hostage. If the hostage squeals, the game ends because the bad guy gets the password. However, if the hostage stays silent, then the bad guy will kill that hostage and move on down the line to the next hostage. And the bad guy will repeat this case or repeat the situation until one of the hostages talks or all of them are dead. Now, the hostages payoffs look like this. There are going to be two different types of hostages. We have sacrificial types, which receive negative one from dying, and negative nine if the bad guy gets the password. So these guys really wanted to try to avoid having the bad guy get the password because that's the worst case situation for them. And the bad guy can do something really, really bad if he gets the password. And of course, they don't want to die either. So that's why they're getting a small negative payoff from dying. But it's worse if the bad guy gets the password and they, they just die. In contrast, we have selfish types, which receive negative one from dying and don't really care whether the bad guy gets the password or not. All these selfish guys care about is whether they survive. They're selfish. It's sort of the definition of the word. So to stack the deck against the bad guy getting the password, we're going to make it so that the sacrificial types are much more likely than the selfish types. So if you pull a random individual out of these hostages, that individual will be sacrificial 95% of the time and selfish 5% of the time. But that's true for all of the individuals, all 50 of them. So it's possible that all of the individuals are sacrificial, or it's possible that all of them are selfish, or anything in between. But because this probability is so much greater that the sacrificial, it's much more likely that all of them are going to be sacrificial than all of them are going to be selfish. So the question I have for you for the interactive part of this video is what percentage of the time will the bad guy get the password? So if you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to perhaps review the last couple of slides and then pause the video and go onto the comment section and put down your guess. Do that now, please. All right, so I'm assuming you've done that because I'm about to reveal the answer. I'm guessing that a lot of these answers are going to be something fairly high, like close to 100%, but more like, you know, 99% or 98%, somewhere in there. However, the correct answer is that the bad guy gets the password 100% of the time. And the reason that the bad guy's plan is so effective is because it induces the first guy to always squeal regardless of his type. It doesn't matter if the, the first guy to move is a sacrificial type or a selfish type. That guy is always going to be talking. It only takes one guy. The bad guy doesn't even have to kill anybody to get to the answer. And the reason we can see this, well, the reason that we can get to this answer here is we just need to prove that this is true, and we're just going to prove this is true for the rest of this video, and that will imply that this answer is correct. So to see that the first guy will always squeal regardless of his type, we have to consider two different cases. One, when the uh, first guy is selfish, and then the second case will be if the first guy is sacrificial. So think about this from the perspective of a selfish guy going first. Selfish guys have a strictly dominant strategy. They only care about survival. If they talk, they guarantee their survival and guarantee a, a payoff of zero. But if they remain silent, they die and receive negative one. This means everyone else's decision is irrelevant to them. They will always want to talk because the alternative is strictly worse. And so done, basically the selfish guys always talk and so if a selfish guy begins the game he talks and the game ends so case one was really simple case two is going to be a little bit more difficult and a little bit more surprising that a sacrificial guy going first is still going to talk now note that these sacrificial guys unlike the selfish guys don't have a strictly dominant strategy if no one talks sacrificial guys prefer dying and getting negative one to talking and getting negative nine these sacrificial guys we can think of them as being noble in that regard however the problem here is that it's very unlikely that no one will talk. And to see that, we need to think about the future. Selfish types always talk. They have that strictly dominant strategy, which we saw a couple slides ago. So a best case scenario for a sacrificial guy going first, well, you can't control the selfish guys. He knows that the selfish guys are going to talk. And so the best case scenario for him is that all remaining sacrificial types will remain silent. So anyone who moves in the future who is a sacrificial type, his best case scenario as the guy going first is for the rest of these guys, these sacrificial types, to remain silent. So the probability no one talks, given this best case scenario, is the probability that all individuals after him 
are going to be sacrificial types who are remaining silent. So the probability that one of these guys is sacrificial is 0.95. And so the probability that all of them are sacrificial is 0.95 raised to the 49th power because there are 49 other guys remaining. And that comes out to about 0.08. So the probability someone talks is one minus that probability or about 0.92. So the probability that someone talks because of these selfish types existing is is fairly high. It's going to be 0.92. So almost uh, 92% of the time, the someone in the future will be talking, and it's going to be one of these selfish types. So if you calculate the sacrificial guy going first, his expected utilities for keeping quiet and talking, well, starting with keeping quiet, 8% of the time, or about 8% of the time, no one else will talk. And so by not talking, by keeping quiet, this first hostage receives a payoff of negative 1%. And 92% of the time, someone will talk. And in that case, the first guy gets negative one for dying and negative nine for someone telling the bad guy the password. And so if you sum these two payoffs together, you get a, a payoff of about negative 0.928. That's his expected utility for keeping quiet. His expected utility for talking is negative nine because that guarantees his survival. He doesn't get negative one for dying, but the bad guy gets the password, so he gets a payoff of negative nine. And lo and behold, if you compare these two payoffs here, well, the sacrificial guy going first actually earns more from talking than keeping quiet and getting negative 9.28. This 0.28 is the difference here. This makes this payoff worse than this payoff. And so the sacrificial guy going first is actually going to want to talk. And so that's the surprising result is that now we have shown that even in the best case scenario, the sacrificial guy going first should talk. So regardless of the type, regardless of whether the first guy is a sacrificial guy or a selfish guy, he talks. So what's going on here? Well, the reason that these sacrificial types are talking is because they don't have much faith in their comrades. They figure the bad guy is very likely to get the information anywhere, so they might as well talk to save themselves. A couple of remarks about this. First, the bad guy always gets what he's looking for. So the bad guy really looks like the brilliant person in the situation. It's possible that every single one of these guys, all 50 of the hostages, are all sacrificial types. And yet despite that, despite that situation, in that case, even when all 50 of them actually are sacrificial types, the bad guy is still getting the password. So the bad guy really looks like a brilliant individual here. And the second thing that's worth noting is that just because someone talks doesn't make that person a bad person. He might just anticipate that someone else is a bad person, so he acts like one of them. Basically, what's going on here is that it's hard to judge a person by his actions. It might just be the other actions around him or the other actions that would happen around him that causes him to look like a bad person. So that's something to think about. I think the hostages, uh, the hostages dilemma is a pretty interesting game. I hope you thought so too, and I hope that the answer surprised you. Uh, that's it for today, and I will see you later. Take care.